Darth Vader issue number 18 released yesterday. We got to cover the first part of it, which was Darth Vader without his mask. As rarely as we get to see him without it, especially in canon, we got to see a crazy revelation that Darth Vader has already started his transition out of the dark side of the Force. Maybe not the light altogether, but definitely getting outside of his Sith ways. Something that his master Darth Sidious would not appreciate, I'm sure, but he will definitely not appreciate it. His death at the hands of Darth Darth Vader since in a short while after this comic issue, Return of the Jedi is coming and he will die at the hands of Darth Vader, of course, saving his son Luke. This is a crazy comic issue though because it goes all over the place. First it starts with Darth Vader conversing with himself about order. He is now obsessed with that word, order, knowing that Crimson Dawn has completely brought disorder to the galaxy. So what Vader does first is he goes to the expansion region where there's all these clans and factions fighting against each other. Basically, it's portrayed as being the wild, wild west. In the midst of these factions, we get to see that there's a legion of assassins as well, similar to where Ochoa Bastoon came from. We see a sniper as well getting to the shields of the Crimson Dawn members. The infant fighting is just crazy until we get to see Darth Vader come into action. Ochu Bastoon quickly explained to his friends that this was just a test to see if they are ready for a permanent job and seemingly they have passed. You have served chaos, says Darth Vader. Now you will serve me or you will die. Very clear terms by Darth Vader. In the Outer Rim section, we see the Empire basically forcing their way into this unknown territory, bullying the locals, getting their water supply and their land. This is when the natives get involved. They immediately start shooting and fighting, and they are basically getting crushed until Ochi of Bestoon comes to rescue. And as they're thanking Ochi, he says, don't thank me, thank Lord Vader. We now see Lord Vader with his TIE Advanced destroying the Empire. Even the Imperials are baffled. Vader, ever heard of him, says one of the natives? No, but I've always judged every creature by their action, so... If my gut speaks true, this is the hero we've been waiting for. As Vader gets outside of his TIE Advanced, and we can clearly see that he is now a hero to these locals, not only to them, but we get the impression, of course, that he has gone to a lot of these places and portrayed himself as their savior, as their hero. So we see that Vader is ever calculating. He won't let Kira outsmart him in any way. Since Kira has breeded loyalty everywhere, Darth Vader will essentially do the same thing. He is saving a lot of people and a lot of factions just in order for them to swear their loyalty to Darth Vader. Basically, what Vader is doing is fighting fire with fire. This is perfect, says Ochoa Bestoon. I mean, I don't have to tell you, we got them hooked. Now we've got a team of true believers. They're all cheering for Darth Vader as one of them bows. And you're the new hero, says Ochi. So we can send him out to soften up the field before we use our real killers. Nice to have some expendable assets, huh? Vader sits there quietly. All of a sudden, he turns his head towards Ochi and says, you are all expendable in the name of order, as he turns his back and walks away. Yes, Lord Vader, says Ochi. Of course, we all know that Ochi of Bastoon is actually a double spy of Kira of the Crimson Dawn. Whether Vader knows this or not, we are not yet made aware, but I suspect, of course, that Darth Vader does have a strong suspicion ever since he easily flipped Ochi of Bastoon to his side. He knows that Ochi is not to be trusted. This is the methodology that Vader goes by. He is one of those tactful people that if you betray the other side, he knows that it doesn't take much for you to betray him as well. This is why I think Vader is fully aware that Ochoa Bastoon is not as loyal as he claims. However, the tactician that he is, I think he will let this play out until the end, until Ochi has outlived his usefulness, and in the end, he will get what he deserves. What the writers will do with Ochi is very interesting, because a lot of us would like to see the ending of Ochi being a lightsaber plunged to his stomach by Darth Vader, but we know that uh, that Ochi Bastoon will outlive this timeline and basically be killed a lot later after Return of the Jedi by Luke Skywalker. 
Whatever the case may be, Darth Vader is playing this thing out until he can get a bigger faction to fight Kira and the Crimson Dawn as they're hiding in plain sight. All of a sudden, though, we cut to a familiar place to us, Polis Massa. There's a shadowy figure approaching one of the medical droids that had previously birthed the children of Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala. We saw this in Revenge of the Sith. Now the masked figure kneels down, says hello. Someone was here, huh? What were they looking for? This person asks the medical droid. The droid simply plays the recording that Vader previously saw of Padme saying her last words to Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's good in him. Padme, says the masked figure as we can clearly see tears out of her eyes. I know, there's still... As Padme is talking, all of a sudden we get to see an old friend of Darth Vader and ours. It is the forensics droid Z-67, who was left here by Darth Vader. Ah, Sabe, says the droid. Now we get to see that Sabe had survived the entire attack on Darth Vader. Almost all of them died except for Sabe, handmaiden of the Queen. Did you find what you were looking for? No, says Sabay. I'm looking for Vader. Ah, and what will you do when you find him? We'll see, says Sabay. And of course, we realize that the emblem of Crimson Dawn is stitched on Sabay's right shoulder vest. And this is the moment, of course, when the Marvel comics, the Star Wars comics, leave us hanging because we got a cliffhanger again to be continued from this point on. But issue number 18 just revived Sabe again. I suspected Sabe was alive, of course, because we never got to see a full confirmation about Sabe's death. We never got to see a corpse or anything. So Sabe is back, and not only is she back, but she is working with the Crimson Dawn. She's working directly for Kira. We know that Sabay fully hates Darth Vader and blames Vader completely for the death of Padme. So her being in cahoots with Kira is not at all surprising. However, what the leaders and the women of the Crimson Dawn will achieve against Vader, that of course remains to be seen. I can't wait for issue number 19. And we have the Crimson Rain comic series starting in December 8th as well. So be sure to subscribe for all those guys. I'm going to cover everything on this channel. So be sure to stay tuned for those. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below. Subscribe for dailies. Now you have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.